So here we're going to look at functions. Uh, before we start, let's just clear up a little thing about notation. Uh, the usual notation, the one that I use, is uh, f brackets x, which we call f of x, uh, is equal to something. You will occasionally see it as f colon x arrow something, x goes to something, that means. If I were you, I would always rewrite it this way. Uh, you won't get marked down for doing that. They mean exactly the same thing. Right, what is a function? Well, a function is, you'll have heard it described as a machine before, and we put input values into it, they're usually called x, and at the other end pops output values, which are usually f, if we call the function f of x, as in question one there, or sometimes g, or occasionally y, but input values and output values. And the thing you need to remember which will get you out of most trouble with functions, is that whatever goes into the bracket replaces the x on the other side. Let's see what I mean by doing question one. So we can see that f of x is 3x minus 1. And so when we're asked to find f of 7, well, what do we do? We say f of 7 is 3 times 7 minus 1, because, as I say, the 7 replaces the x. And then we just calculate what that is. Three sevens are 21, minus one is 20. So far, so good. Now what about part B? Well, this time we're asked to find f of x plus three. Now, it's the x plus three that is replacing the x this time. So where we had three x minus one, we now have three x plus three minus one. And notice I've used a bracket. And all I have to do now is simplify that. So 3 times x and 3 times 3. Let's mark them on there like that. 3x, 3 times 3 is 9. Still got the minus 1. And so we get 3x plus 8. But again, notice all I did was replace the x by x plus 3. Right, let's have a look at a second question. Uh, this time I've called the function g. So we have g of x is equal to 3x squared minus 1. And the question's slightly different this time. It says, given that g of p equals 11, find the two possible values of p. Well, let's start by doing what we can. What is g of p? Well, we said uh, earlier that whatever goes in the bracket replaces the x. So I've got a p, and that's equal to uh, 3 p squared minus 1. Again, I've just replaced the x by p on both sides. And I'm told that g of p is equal to 11. And so I have here an equation to solve. And that's going to allow me to find the values of p. So we're not really doing functions anymore. We're just solving an equation. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides to get the term with p in it on its own. So I've got 3 p squared equals 12. And now I'm going to follow the usual rules. I'm going to get p squared on its own uh, by dividing by p, uh, 3. That means the 3's cancel on the left. That's rather the point of doing that. And so p squared equals 4. Now notice that the question says the two possible values of p. Well, where do they come from? Remember that when I square root something, I can get a positive value and a negative value. So p is equal to, well, obviously 2, but also it could be minus 2, because minus 2 also squares to give 4. So don't miss that out. When you square root 4, you get plus or minus 2. If you're looking for work on composite functions or inverse functions, which are the sort of the next steps in the functions topic, there are other tutorials on those. So there's a nice, easy and basic introduction to functions.